No lobbying group wants to defeat the budget reconciliation bill more than the US Chamber of Commerce. And that has been abundantly clear, well, really for months now. But lately, they have decided to dedicate a ton of money to advertising that targets so called moderate Democrats. You know, these are the Democrats who run in vulnerable districts. These are usually the Democrats who take a lot of money in corporate donations for their campaigns. Well, the US Chamber of Commerce has made it clear if you don't block the budget reconciliation bill, which raises taxes on the rich and corporations, which offers all sorts of you know material benefits to the lives of working Americans, well, we're gonna come for you and we're gonna come come at you real hard. So here's what we know based on their ad buys. The ads target representatives Cindy Axney from Iowa. Angie Craig from Minnesota, Antonio Delgado from New York, Josh Harder from California, and Elaine Luria from Virginia, urging them to reject Democrats' party line spending plan over its proposed tax hikes. Because remember, this is the US Chamber of Commerce. They represent the best interests of corporations, of business owners, of employers who certainly want to maximize their profits and ensure that they're not paying their fair share in taxes. Now the ad campaign comes after the chamber sent out, get this, a key vote letter to lawmakers urging them to reject the reconciliation package or risk losing the group's endorsement. No member of Congress can achieve the support of the business community if they vote to pass this bill as currently constructed, the letter read. Now, let me remind you all that the reconciliation bill includes wildly popular provisions that again would improve the lives of Americans, which is why the support for that bill crosses party lines. Democrats and Republicans overwhelmingly favor it. So losing the support of the business community wouldn't necessarily be a big deal if you're actually providing material benefits to your constituents. So I wanna give you an example of what these ads look like. Let's take a look. American workers and small businesses are being hit from all sides. A devastating pandemic, skyrocketing inflation. And now the Biden administration wants to hit them again with massive tax increases. These tax hikes would be a body blow to our economy, endangering our recovery and taking more hard earned money from small businesses and working families. Tell Representative Delgado, don't knock us out with these massive tax increases. Now, while there might be some regulations in regard to false advertising for private companies, political ads can contain all sorts of lies. And that political ad had all sorts of lies. First off, the budget reconciliation bill would in fact increase taxes on the rich. So there is a proposal to raise the capital gains tax. Capital gains has to do with money earned, income earned through investments. Let's say you buy stocks, something that mostly the top 10% of this country can afford to do. If you earn money on whatever stock purchase you've made, well then you pay a tax on that, a capital gains tax. It's still income, but it's taxed differently at a much lower rate than the income you would earn from working really hard at a job. So. It's it's calling for a fairer system. Hey, let's raise the capital gains tax. If you're making more than four hundred thousand dollars a year, you can afford to pay a little more in taxes. That's what it calls for. But remember, we're talking about incredibly wealthy people who don't want to pay their fair share. So what they do is try to fear monger about ooh these middle class workers, their taxes are going to go up. That is not the case. If you are making less than four hundred grand a year. You're good, you're not gonna get a tax increase. Now, the head of the Chamber of Commerce, Suzanne Clark, argues that, quote, the success of the bipartisan infrastructure negotiations provides a much better model for how Congress should proceed in addressing America's problems. The reason why Clark loves the bipartisan infrastructure bill is because it doesn't raise taxes on the rich and calls for some pretty lucrative government contracts for private corporations to essentially build infrastructure. It also privatizes 
public infrastructure, which means that some of the roads and bridges that Americans get to use now for free will now have tolls and fees implemented. So the corporations essentially managing that infrastructure can make some money. That's what this is about. That's why they love the bipartisan infrastructure bill, hate the reconciliation bill. The reconciliation bill is the important piece of legislation that we want to get passed. And there are going to be a ton of lies, both in political advertising and from the corporate media about how harmful the reconciliation bill is. But make no mistake about it, the reconciliation bill would have a more equitable system, tax system to ensure that working Americans aren't paying a higher percentage of their earnings toward taxes compared to the richest Americans. Okay, it would actually provide some of the social programs that we desperately need, including universal pre K, an expansion of Medicare. It would lower the Medicare eligibility age. It would allow Medicare to negotiate for lower drug prices so Americans aren't paying two to three times more for pharmaceutical drugs compared to other countries. It would have mandatory paid family leave. Look, the reconciliation bill cuts into the financial interests and profit motives of the richest, most successful corporations in this country. They don't want to live in a country that has a system that isn't rigged in their favor. So that's why they put out these types of ads. And weak, conniving corporate Democrats, you know, they want, they do right by their donors. And their donors are represented by the US Chamber of Commerce. Now again, I, I know what to expect with corporate Democrats. The only way that we really have a path forward for the reconciliation bill is if progressives in the House follow through on their threats, that they will block the infrastructure bill unless they get the passage of the reconciliation bill. As long as they hold on to that, as long as they follow through on that, I really do think there's a possibility that we'll get the reconciliation bill. But in terms of corporate Democrats, they're weak, they're cowards. Ads like the one I just showed you speak volumes to them. Rather than fight for their constituents, they're gonna cower and carry out the best interests of their corporate donors. Pretty pathetic, and they should be primaried. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.